My name is Bob Kassir, and at City College, the main job that I ever had was the uh, professor of political science in 1955, which marked the transition from the Curbstone College downtown to the Riviera College. And I think that was uh, significant in a, in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, we were housed in what had been a collegiate institution. And certainly one of our goals right from the beginning was to establish the college as a collegiate institution and not as an appendage of the high school. Uh, in that connection, it should be noted that when I got there in 59, that we were part of the Santa Barbara High School District. And the reason for our being was not what everybody would like to think, but it was to raise money for the high school district for increased taxes and bonds. And we were really an afterthought. And so I, with John O'Day, agree that coming here was the best thing I ever did, but it was, I had a harder decision because uh, I was offered, at the same year, I was offered the job that I had aspired to in my youth, which was to become the head varsity basketball coach at Santa Barbara High School. Well, I turned it down and have never regretted it. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time that we had here together. Well, I think there are a number of marking points. First was the selection of Joe Cosan as president. And he had had, unlike the previous people, directors, had had previous junior college, that's what it's called then, uh, junior college experience as, a, as an administrator. And therefore he had some background into what the community colleges were all about and some of the attitudes that went along with it. Um, so I'd say that was the first definite uh, marking point. And then the other ones, I think, uh, waited until we got the, our own school board, which was in the mid-1960s. And I remember uh, the instructor associate asked me to make the first presentation for salaries and working conditions. Now, and I think since it was a new board and they were getting acquainted, they were very nice. And the president at the time went along with their recommendations. We did very well. I think the first satisfaction, which uh, would be that I was associated with a group of professionals and uh, who had the best interest of the college at heart. And that working with them and then working with the students were the uh, priority points. You might say the, the activity in self-governance was a separate part, but I also received a, a great deal of satisfaction in that area as well. I think of it mainly not so much in terms of myself, but as being part of a group which started at the Riviera and continued over here on the Mesa campus of a group dedicated to the establishment of the community college, the city college, as an integral unit of higher education. And there were things that helped along that line. For example, the master plan for higher education was adopted in the 50s late 50s, and the community college were, were definitely established, not as an adjunct of the high school, but as an integral part of higher education. I think I feel fortunate that I was able to get across uh, the material that I taught to most students, and I think perhaps I helped them somewhat in uh, analyzing many of the controversial uh, issues in politics and foreign policy that face the United States. In connection with the Vietnam uh, War, 
we established a uh, free speech area. And I remember uh, participating in at least two debates, uh, urging a little bit of caution there. But um, also one of our presidents, Yudel Bertolazzo, who was uh, really a fireball, one-year president, uh, would get up and condemn the uh, intervention of the United States in Vietnam. You don't, you don't find that kind of a character very often that comes along. Well, the, fir the first one um, was uh, Bob Rockwell, who also had a background in uh, community college education. He was not a unanimous choice. The superintendent, remember we still had a superintendent downtown, Cher had his reservations about him, but he, he proceeded, uh, and then I joined when after COSAN, he came in after COSAN, and COSAN had asked me to join his administration as the academic dean, the dean of instruction. And so I had to work closely with um, him in, on a, a number of matters. He came in towards the spring of 19, what was it? 60, somewhere in there, 62, 61, 62. An old man like me, these dates get, get fuzzy. Um, then, of course, we had uh, Glenn Gooder, who was, uh, worked in a quiet way, but was uh, very efficient, had a lot to do with the building program. We had a very competent person in David Mertes. And then we had a temporary period with not too much stability, where we had an acting president, uh, Lorenzo Delarmi, who also played an important role in, in the um, bond campaigns and the, and the building program. And then, of course, in early 1980s, we had the uh, reign, you might call it a reign, of Peter McDougall. Uh, and I think uh, that uh, looking at his broad tenure, you'd have to say that uh, he's certainly one of the top three presidents, along with Cosan and Bordelazzo, in my book, and I'd rate him at the top. The community contributes to the college by supporting the bond issues, and the things got very tough there with Proposition uh, 13, I think it was, which changed the allocation of monies, and you had to, you had to get people who would be favorable to that, and we were very lucky with the boards that we, we had, although, we had some tough times in terms of getting salary increases for that reason for the tightness, because of the tightness of money. Um, I think that the, the faculty members also went out in the community. I, I made over a hundred uh, presentations in the community as a, as a speaker or as a member of a panel or being the moderator. And, uh, then I think uh, exposure such as that was a, a good thing uh, for the college. And there, I was not alone. There were a lot of others that did the same thing. I had um, one that I remember was a student from Iran. And um, he so contributed. He was well-versed in international affairs already. And when they overthrew the Shah before the the mullahs came in and, and took over. He became the ambassador, Iranian ambassador to the United States. And I don't know of anybody that has achieved that high a distinction of the graduates that I've had, but the people that have become lawyers and uh, professors at, at some of the larger institutions in Canada and the United States. I had John Roberts in Canada and uh, another student uh, that went to uh, went to uh, Princeton and uh, is now teaching at Vanderbilt and has written a number of books on um, in the field of political science. Well, I came in '55 and uh, retired in '92, so that's 37 years, and I taught part time for five years, so most of my adult life and. I think that uh, on one of the questions you have about looking back, I can say that those were good years, 
uh, productive years, and I was fortunate enough to teach at two campuses with tremendous views. It was a pleasure always coming to work. <laughs>